Good. Welcome. This is Mrs. Sasek. I'm Miss Oberlander. We're going to start with some geographic vocabulary in our first lesson today. All right. So we're going to model to you today on how we're going to do this flipped classroom. So just follow along. Feel free to pause, rewind at any time you wish. And you want to make sure that you have your notes out and that you are ready to uh, be taking notes and you are also going to be drawing your pictures to go along with them. All right, guys, our first word is latitude or parallel, and it is an imaginary line that runs around the globe. It measures north and south. A way you can remember it is flat lats because the lines are flat on the globe. And another way is you see Miss Overlander and myself. Uh, this is another way to remember it. We have a hand sign. And you want to make sure that you know that the parallel or the latitude that runs in the middle of the earth is the equator. Then your next term is longitude. Um, and these lines measure east and west. They're also known as meridians. And you can see the North Pole at the top, the South Pole at the bottom, and they are running long ways down the globe. Right. All these longitude lines are called longitude lines. Look how long they were compared to latitude lines. If you rewind, you'll see that they were all different sizes as they got closer to the poles. They got smaller. Longitude lines are all the same and they're all very long. And this is the equator. It circles the Earth in half and it's zero degrees. It's a special latitude line, a very special one. It separates the northern hemisphere from the southern hemisphere. If you look at the picture in the middle, this is actually where you can go to the equator. I believe this picture is in Ecuador. And you can stand at the equator and have one side in the northern hemisphere and the other side in the southern hemisphere, as mm -hmm. you see marked in the picture uh, in the middle. Then there's a special line that is a longitude line, and it is the prime meridian, and it runs um, zero degrees up and down, and it's the equator standing up. And it separates the eastern hemisphere from the western hemisphere. And then the picture on the lower right-hand corner, it's actually the prime meridian. Um, you, that is taken in Greenwich, England, outside of London. Uh, Miss Sasek has been there a long time ago. Uh, you can go there and stand in the middle. Um, and again, I'll, I don't think we mentioned this before. These prime meridian, the latitude lines, the longitude lines, they're not true lines. You're not going to look up in the sky and see lines. These are imaginary lines. They're invisible. They're invisible, but they're used to help with navigation. And on maps and to on locate maps. specific spots. <clears throat> and we're going to be doing a mapping activity later on to practice these skills. term is elevation. It's the height from sea level. And basically sea level is zero and anything more above sea level would be a positive number. That's right. Okay, our next word is scale. It is a set of lines marked off in units, any type of units, measurable units. And it allows you to estimate the real distance between two points on a map. So, you lo so the scale you see currently is probably something you've seen on a map before, maybe in math class when you're doing you know, ratios or proportions. And you see miles, kilometers, and nautical miles. All maps do are in different scales, so you'll want to take note of that. And you want to see, because they're all going to be at different uh, sizes. Some are going to be zoomed in really close. Some are going to be far away. So it's really important to know on a piece of paper how much an inch would be in real life on the ground. Okay, our next word is compass rose. No, it's not a flower. It is a design with four pointers to show you the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. You should remember this from elementary school. And the one you see on the left is very simple, very basic. 
north, south, east, west. The one on the right is much more complex. It has the secondary um, directions and as well as more complicated ones like west, southwest. These are really good for uh, weather when they're talking about wind direction, especially if you're uh, navigating on the water, you're sailing, you probably need to know where the wind is coming from. And when you're doing weather reports, you'll see this a lot too. Your next term is a key or a legend. It's a small box that lists symbols, colors from a map and what they represent. Here's a few examples. And as you can see, sometimes they have specific symbols that represent different things. You want to take careful notice of that because they're not all the same. And just a funny thing, on a nautical chart, there's actually a symbol for a shipwreck and it's a little sinking boat. So you will see different things on different charts and maps. All right, our first physical geographic term is called a basin, a bowl, like, like your cereal bowl. Think about that type of shape. Bowl of land sometimes drained by water. Now the first picture you see is called Burke's Garden. It is in southwestern Virginia. And you see how perfectly round it is. It is up on the sides, surrounded by a mountain, and in the middle is a little valley, a bowl-shaped valley. And some people call it um, a thumbprint, because a giant's thumbprint or God's thumbprint, because if you look at it on Google Earth, search it after this, you will see it looks like somebody took their giant thumb and pushed down on the earth. It's really cool. And this is a basin. A tributary is a little river or stream that goes into a big river or river, it's a river branch. And this tributary, um, you can see, is running into the larger river. If Goose Creek is nearby, it runs into the bigger river, the Potomac River, and then all of the rivers um, that are running out eastward, um, the Potomac River, go into the Chesapeake Bay. All right, plateau, this one's pretty self-explanatory. Tall, flat land. Picture I'm gonna show you. In the background, you see it. It's tall, it's flat, and it's land. Very simple. Don't overthink it, guys. <clears throat> All right, our next word is called continental divide. High land that separates waters. I'm like, wait a minute, that, that's kind of weird. Well, look at this map. So the red line is the continental divide, it's in the Rocky Mountains. Everything that is on the right side, the purple-blue area, any water that is in a river or a stream or rains on that land, it's going to flow to the Atlantic Ocean. And if you look on the left side, where it's all green, all the rivers and streams and rain that falls on that side is going to flow to the Pacific Ocean. So that's the point, that red line, of where the land splits the waterways to two sides. So here it is again, high land that separates waters. And actually you can go hiking um, on the Continental Divide in the Rockies and you can see exactly where the water gets separated to the two separate oceans. Your next term is harbor and it is a protected place along the shore. You can see it's like an inverted peninsula. The land is on three sides of the water and the water comes in one side. It's um, a great place to dock or anchor a boat because the weather and storms are not as harsh or severe there. Um, and so it is a protected place of water where the river or the um, water flows into the harbor. And you can see all those dots in that photograph are sailboats and boats that have done that. Okay, <clears throat> uh, our next word, I think this is our last word, is canyon. Is a deep, narrow valley with steep walls. So we see here part of the Grand Canyon. Okay, there's nothing gentle sloping about this. Okay, the river here has kind of eroded away 
a lot of the sediment and rock, especially up here, it is left behind um, steep walls and valleys that are just, that's what makes it a canyon. Okay guys, this is the end of your first lesson. Uh, please feel free to rewind, write down any other questions you may have, and we'll see you in class. Bye.